Hey everybody, what's up? And today I will be bringing you my top 20 games of 2014. The end of the year is tonight. Happy New Year, guys. Um, countdown tonight. Uh, it's probably like different in different places of the world. Obviously, it is different in different places of the world. In Australia, I'm pretty sure it's like the New Year already. Um, but yeah, we're gonna start off with top 20. Um, and I know a lot of you are gonna disagree with my. This is just opinion based and. There is remastered in here that I hadn't played before, and so it's completely opinion based. It's it's like you can't, well, you can hate on me, but I mean, it's just opinion. So you, I don't know, just don't hate, don't hate, don't hate. Uh, but you, your opinions will obviously be different to mine, and maybe some of you guys will agree with my list, some of you won't. And I have a f couple of games like higher up that a lot of people kind of hated on, but um, like we're gonna start off with. With 20 and then obviously work our way to number one so yeah like i said remasters in there and it's kind of like there has there hasn't been any like standout amazing just wonderful games this year i mean that aren't remasters except well when we get up the list i'll tell you my exceptions but yeah um number 20 we're gonna start off here with drive club and that's what I mean by some of these games that I have in the list are I'm going to get hated on for because Drive Club was widely attacked for its release. And it did have a poor release and I was not happy with it. And, but it's just a great racing game. I mean, the graphics in that game are off the chain. And, and the gameplay is good. It's just that it, it was kind of broken online. And that was what they were... That's what they were building it up. I, I don't really play it online. Uh, I, I played it offline most most of the time. And I fucking love it. I, lo I love that la love that racing game. And... This is my highest racing game. Besides Mario Kart. In the list. And it, I'm going to tell you what percentage it got on Metacritic as well. I might put it somewhere in the... Um, somewhere around here i'm gonna have face cam and a picture of drive club and maybe what what number it is and what score it got on metacritic and i liked it i, I like that game a lot and the graphics and the sounds of the cars the cars models look amazing and we're going to move on to number 19 now which is a horror game and it is alien isolation it got mixed reviews but um overall IGN gave it a terrible review. They gave it a 5.9, which is really bad. But most 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 reviewers gave it a good a good rating. I think why I get why IGN gave it so low, but I I I wouldn't give it that low at all. It's 19th in my top 20 game of the years, and at the start, the game is is really intensely awesome, and the the art style of the game, or should I say the graphic style? There's not um like the old kind of style to it, uh, the computers and everything. They look awesome, and there's a really cool look to the game. And the first, the your first few encounters with the alien are terrifying. And I get why people like don't like it as much after a while because it, the they do wear down. I mean, you have so many encounters with the alien that they start to get a uh, watered down and. You don't like them as as much, and you're just kind of hiding in certain places for far too long, trying to stay away from him. And um, but there, there's parts in that game that I absolutely loved. When you go into space, you're playing as the what's I can't even remember his name. Not when you're not playing as Ripley anymore. You're playing as this big guy. I can't remember his name right now. But and you go out into space, and you're just you're just kind of exploring space. It's really fucking awesome. And when you go into like the aliens den or whatever you call it, the layer it's so cool some of the missions in it like i kind of agree that it's too long the game is too long i know a lot of people like love long games but there's some games that should be long and then there's some games that are kind of just dragged out and i felt like this one was a little dragged out but i mean i still loved it and i played through it i played through it in full and i enjoyed it and my my walkthrough was a lot of fun and i i know you guys liked it anyway and I was scared shitless on countless times, so yeah. We're gonna move on to number 18, which is Titanfall, which is kind of a, a weird a weird game. I mean it's it, not a weird game, but it's its release was weird. I mean it was hyped up so much 
and the beta kind of just died down the hype for the game because like you play it, it there's no campaign it's just online and it, and you've basically played all of what you're gonna play in the beta and it's it's kind of a weird situation but um it was still a lot of fun to play it was a lot of fun it was, to play with your friends but it's not a game that i'd like get on and play for hours on end by myself or anything I, i'd i wouldn't i'd play with my friends but um i don't i haven't played it much at all recently but at the time you did have a lot of fun with it it was kind of a new aspect with the titans and that was cool um we'll move on to 17 i'm not going to say too much about titanfall and i don't want to drag this video out too long um but yeah it got an 86 metacritic metacritic review score which which is pretty good um i forgot to mention alien got 80 as well um metacritic and i, I probably do it for the system that i'm playing it on um Next up is Metro Redo, which is a mix, uh, a redone version of Metro 23 and Metro Last Light. And I haven't completed Last Light yet, but man, is it fun. Those games are, are really good, and, it, and you get a really good deal with them as well. I think it's both the games for 40 euro, 40 dollars, 40 euro, uh, I think it's the same. And they're really good games. They're well worked. There's a, a good linear storyline to it, and... It's not an amazing storyline. You wouldn't get too emotionally attached to any of the characters or anything, but it's fun to play. The gameplay is good. Um, the mechanics of the shooting are good. And next up is Destiny, which is also kind of a strange situation because it got the most hype out of any game I can remember. Um, along with Watch Dogs, which is not even on my list. Uh, so the two games that kind of got most hyped up for 2014 were kind of letdowns. I enjoy Destiny. Um... Destiny was a lot of fun. I played a lot of hours of it. The PvP in it is so much fun. I love that. The online, it really is really well done. And it's probably my favorite online shooter of 2000 and... Maybe. I don't know. It's up there anyway in the top two of my shooters online for 2014. Um, it's just, it's a lot of fun. But the, the campaign was diabolical. There was no story. Uh, well, the campaign wasn't diabolical, but the story was diabolical. The campaign was just... The gameplay was fun. But, I mean, the storyline, there is none, basically. It's basically no story. And it's kind of embarrassing for Destiny to be such a massive game and highly touted and have a story like that. I am i don't know. But um, the online and the raids were fun. And uh, I'm definitely going to play more Destiny. I'm not done with Destiny. And I enjoyed it. It got a 78% on Metacritic. As you can see in the corner or wherever I'm going to have it. Up in 15th place is a Little Big Planet 3. And I know some of you are probably going to hate me for having this on the list. But man, uh, I love Little Big Planet 1. I love Little Big Planet 2 on PS3. And I'm glad they brought one for PS4. I was really excited when I heard that it was coming. Uh, a lot of people were like, meh. But I, I, I enjoyed the two first Little Big Planet, so I can't see why I wouldn't enjoy it on PS4. But they brought new aspects to this game. The storyline was short, um, way shorter than Little Big Planet 2. Uh, it didn't take long to complete. It only took me 13 parts on YouTube, I think. Uh, but there was, the four characters made it so much more fun to do. And I'm sure there's levels that you can do uh, again. And there's like extra parts uh, that you can do with the four characters and online levels too, so the online creation levels, uh, there's so much depth to them, it's crazy, um, but the four, the way you, uh, it's not just Sackboy, there's like Odd Sock, Swoop, and what's the other, Toggle, which, uh, Toggle switches between a big and a small guy, and, and big, the big guy can do stuff that the small guy can't, and the small guy can do stuff that the big guy can't, and Odd Sock does crazy jumping and running skills, and Swoop obviously can fly, seen as a bird, which is really cool. It adds unique aspects to the game that we have not seen before in Little Big Planet. And you've pl uh, the one of the missions that stands out to me as well is when you played as a Yeti, which was really cool in the campaign. Um, and I enjoyed that game immensely. It got a 79% on Metacritic. Uh, IGN is kind of the reviewer I would most watch, but uh, they gave it a 6.8, and the thing I found weird about that review that they gave Little Planet is they mostly praise the game in the review, and they, they don't have too much bad to say about it except glitches, which I encountered none of, and that's why they gave the game such a low review. It's kind of strange to me, but um, anyway, we're going to move on to 14, which is Halo the Master Chief Collection. Uh, it got an 89% on Metacritic, and I had not played Halo before this, ever. 
I, I think I might have played on a little bit of two-player wave thing in from Halo 2 on Xbox 360 or something with my uncle, but I never actually played um, properly any of the campaigns or any of the online, so <laughs> it was good that I got a chance to play it and everyone was praising Halo. I did enjoy it. Um, I played Halo Combat Evolved, uh, made a part one on that, which actually got a lot of views and a lot of likes, and I made a full Halo 2 anniversary walkthrough. Um, I'm playing. I'm currently playing Halo 3, so I haven't completed it yet or anything, but um, you can tell that the campaigns, the storyline in the campaigns is amazing. The cutscenes are, are really well done, and the new graphics of them make it that much better. Obviously, they make it a lot better. And it looks really good. The cutscene graphics are amazing. Like, Gravemind is one mission that sticks out from Halo 2. Man, does that creature look incredible. And the fucking... What do you call him? The Arbiter is so fucking cool as well. He looks really awesome as well. And when you see the size of him as well, compared to, like, the normal soldiers, he's actually massive. And... The storyline is brilliant. Well done. I can't wait to play uh, more of 3 and 4. And I can't wait for Halo 5. So the Master Chief Collection, I, 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 you get access to Halo 5 Beta, which I've been playing the last couple of days. is really fun. And yeah, I've done a couple of videos on that as well if you want to check them out. Uh, we're going to move on to Mario Kart 8, which is in 13th. Um, it got an 88% on Metacritic. And <sighs> that game is just fun. This, this is my second highest Nintendo game. The next one is actually just above this one. And Nintendo done really well this year. Um... I've never been, like, really that into Nintendo. I played the 3DS. Uh, what was the N64? I think that's Nintendo, right? Um, I can't remember, but... Um, yeah, they, they had a good year. They had a weird start to the year, but Mario Kart brought it back. And they got a lot of sales on Mario Kart. They got a lot of sales from Super Smash Bros. Bayonetta 2. They have the highest rated games. Uh, Bayonetta 2 didn't sell well, but it got a 9.5 on IGN. It got a freaking... 92, 92, 93%, I think, on Metacritic, which is incredible. Uh, uh, you, you rarely see games that high on Metacritic. Um, so, yeah, Mario Kart 8 was well done. The tracks were well done. The visuals were nice and colorful, and I liked it a lot. It's just so much fun, Mario Kart 8. Um, next up is Super Smash Bros., which got 92% on Metacritic, which is really, really good. And it's one of the highest reviewed games of 2014. And it was my first time ever playing Super Smash Bros. So, um, obviously it's going to take me a while to get used to. But I really enjoyed it from what I've played so far. It just seems like immense fun. And just like so much fun to play with your friends. Even just playing against the CPU is fun as well. And the different abilities and stuff there. And different characters. And the visuals of Super Smash Bros. on Wii U are incredible. I really like uh, how crisp they are. And Charizard, who is a Pokemon that I, I... Is my favorite Pokemon. And I've been, I'm a big Pokemon fan. Looks just incredible on the Wii U. And I really like him. <sighs> Charizard's my favorite from Super Smash Bros. We're going to move on to number 11 here. Um which is GTA 5 on next gen. I did not play GTA 5 on uh, last gen. I know that's hard to believe, but I, I was never really a fan of GTA. Uh, San Andreas I loved. I didn't play any of that ones, really. I never really got into GTA like everyone else does. GTA is this big mainstream game, and yeah, I don't know what it is. It's, it's just, it's not, to me, as good as everyone says it is, but I, I play G, the other GTA GTA games that is, but I played GTA 5 and I really did enjoy it. I really, I, I'm still in the process of playing the campaign, uh, so I haven't completed it or anything. So I know this list is kind of based off me mostly playing the game, so I haven't completed like every game on this list, but you kind of know halfway through, quarters way through the game, what it's going to be like for the rest. And and the ending can sour a game, but uh, like the alien, the ending of Alien Isolation, I did not like at all. Uh, but yeah, GTA 5, anyway, in 11th position, so uh, the, the storyline, the banter between Michael and Trevor is really funny, I, I really like Franklin as well, Michael's probably my favourite, but uh, everyone, Trevor is like everyone's favourite, but he's probably, uh, I didn't like him at the start, <laughs> he's kind of too crazy for me, but uh, I'm, I'm starting to think he's funny now, he, he really is, um, his impression from me is improving, and we're going to move into the top 10 now, guys, oh. So top ten, uh, starting off in tenth, 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 tenth 
position is Wolfenstein The New Order. This is a highly underrated game for the year for me. It got 80% on... Oh yeah, GTA got 95% on Metacritic, by the way, uh, on Next Gen. My dog just jumped up behind me, as you would have saw. Um, but yeah, Wolfenstein The New Order, 80% on Metacritic. Uh, it was a highly underrated game for me. The, the storyline, I got invested in it uh, from the get-go with um, the big bad character. Oh, shh. My dog's making noises. But yeah, and the... The storyline was fun. The gameplay is rapidly fun. Jewel wheeling in that game is so much fun. The the, uh, the shooting, it's kind of simple. Plain and simple, and I like it that way. And uh, There's no, like, crazy shit in that game. It's a standard first-person shooter, and I think that's why I loved it so much. Uh, with a good storyline. A standard first-person shooter with a good storyline uh, based on war, which is just what you want, really, in my opinion. Um, which... It turned out to be a really cool game. There's like some cool enemies, different types of enemies, and uh, I turned out to to like that game a lot. It was it was kind of um, towards the start of the year, so the games at the start of the year tend to get forgotten about a little bit. But um, I enjoyed it a lot, and we're gonna move on to number nine here. I had a tough time choosing between ten and nine, which I preferred more, but I went with The Evil Within at nine, which was probably my favorite horror game since Dead Space Two, and Really, it just set the tone early on uh, with the big guy. Uh, you have to get past him and running away from him and you're fucking your leg up. And it just, it, uh, the detective shit, it was cool at the start. And I really enjoyed the whole chapters thing. I liked the way they done it in chapters like that. I, I done the first 14 parts on YouTube and I streamed the rest of it. I got a good following for the stream as well. So I enjoyed doing that a lot. And yeah, uh just just great the enemies were great the story was pretty good as well with ruvik and leslie was pretty crazy how it went at the end and everything was was pretty mad and some trippy moments and shit like that were with castiano and it was it was it was pretty crazy and i really liked it in the end it was it turned out to be a really awesome survival horror game and it was done uh, by the guy that made resident evil which i hear is one of the best horror games i never played is it resident evil i think yeah and i've never played them but um we're going to move on to number 8 here which is kind of a, a unique and different type of game which is sunset overdrive it got uh evil thing got 80 percent on metacritic by the way as well uh if you you would have seen the number in the corner but um sunset overdrive got 83 and boy was it fun it was just from the get-go it the story is filled with fun moments and and just kind of funny moments as well like like even when you die it, it just brings you straight back in a rocket or something it's pretty it's pretty awesome and i enjoyed it a lot and my dog's begging for attention here so i'm kind of trying to rub him at the same time as doing this video but yeah it was just the guns and everything it was just really really well done and i was debating putting this higher up the list but i don't know kind of it kind of seems like a funny game so i don't know why i didn't put it higher but it just it was really fun and unique and a different type of game. Now this, from here on in, is the games that I really love throughout the year. Uh, shush! Shush! Stop! Fucking idiot. Um, <laughs> sorry guys, I'm sorry. Does he want to say hello, is it? Do you want to say hello to the camera? Say hello. Say hello. Like, every time he puts his paw on me. Alright, so... Anyway, Sunset Overdrive, number 8, and it was a great game. Um, and I would love to see another game like it, uh, but that's the thing, there's not many games like it, and the guns were just crazy, like, different types of guns, like, fucking sh shooting out fire candles, Roman, Roman candle, fucking <laughs> shooting tea and teddy bears, I mean, it's just madness from the get-go, and it's a lot of fun, and there wasn't, like, too, there was a cool storyline to it, it was kind of fun-filled, and uh, nothing too serious, nothing too emotional, um, but yeah, we're going to move on to number 7 here, which is The Wolf Among Us, which I only played recently. I did not play it on release. I did not do a walkthrough of it or anything, but I just played it um, maybe a week ago over Christmas, before Christmas. And man, did I fucking love that. It's my, it's like the first Telltale games that I've played through fully because I've, I've recently played Tales from the Borderlands, which was my first time playing a Telltale game. I love that episode one. Um, 
I love the Game of Thrones episode one. And I'm currently playing The Walking Dead now after finishing The Wolf Among Us. I'm playing season one at the moment, which I am doing a walkthrough of. And I will be doing season two after that. So, um, The Wolf Among Us, the, the storyline, the fables, everything about that game really, really appealed to me. And from the get-go, Big B was awesome. I really liked him. Uh, all the characters were cool. Beauty, Beast... Uh, Beauty was a bit of a bitch, and Beast was a bit of a dick, but I, I mean, I enjoyed their characters, you know, and, uh, even Georgie, he was freaking awesome, even though he was a complete dickhead, and Nerissa, and Snow White, and they were all awesome, and Crane was kind of a cool, little, weird, pedophile villain, and, <laughs> pedophile is what I meant to say, and, uh, the Crooked Man, which we didn't hear much about, it's kind of cool, the way we kind of just built up to the moment when we met him, and it was... It was really awesome, and the, the the decisions really affect the game. I mean, it's it's crazy how much decisions can affect that game. Like in in most most games with decisions, like your your decisions don't really change too much along the the, the game. But like say with with this game, they really did affect it. Like they affected the way people thought of you. It affected the way your storyline progressed, and I really enjoyed it. it got an eighty three percent on Metacritic as well as Sunset Overdrive, and they they were. Pfft, I really enjoyed it. Uh, the storyline at the end uh, left me with a major trip. I was like, what the fuck? And the the last, the scene in the end of the game, or the last chapter of the game, where you turn into a massive fucking wolf and battle uh, Mary, Bloody Mary, that was the coolest fucking thing in a video game in 2014. It was really so awesome, and and I just I just freaked out during that moment, and the ending as well, where it kind of gives you one last decision, and then the game just ends. It's pretty whether to chase down Narissa or whether to leave her go, and I I chose to. Well, if you want to see it, you gotta check out my video. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't do videos. What am I talking about? I I chose to chase after her. What the fuck? I just tripped out there for a second myself, but um. We're going on to number six here. We're nearly into the top five. Number six is Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls Ultimate Evil Edition. Uh, so Diablo 3 came to consoles and boy is it good on console. Uh, it's really awesome. Uh, this got a 90% on Metacritic. IGN gave it a 9.2. Um, so it really did do well review wise um, on the consoles. PS4 and Xbox One that is not PS3 and Xbox 360. Um, it really just fitted perfectly Diablo 3 just fitted perfectly onto the consoles, uh, next-gen consoles, and I, I just loved playing it at start. I, I played co-op with my friend, like, just for hours on end. Uh, I completed the campaign twice. Um, it's just it's just so much fun, and the, and the cutscenes in that game were way fucking more awesome than I thought they would be. Uh, they really were really cool, and everything about that game, uh, I loved it. Um... The, the graphics, there were crisp graphics, and the abilities were really cool, the way they brought it to console as well. Obviously, it's kind of harder to bring that kind of game to console, but they've done it perfectly, and I feel like Blizzard done uh, just a top job on that game, uh, bringing it to next-gen, and it was the best game for consoles as well. Um, we're going to move into the top five now. Uh, st stop it. Uh, we're going to start off the top five here with Infamous Second Son, which was a game early on in the year, and it got an 80% on Metacritic, so people kind of forget it, about it because it was early on, but I really enjoyed that game. Uh, it was the first kind of game that I played that I thought, wow, this is just pure next-gen. Killzone Shadowfall done that for me as well, actually, but um, Infamous, the graphics were just absolutely insane. They're the best graphics I've seen probably to date, besides maybe the cutscenes in Advanced Warfare, which were kind of CGI, CGI-ish, not gameplay, uh, but gameplay-wise in Infamous Second Son, even when you're just walking around, the reflection in the pod, uh, in the puddles, it's just, it's just fucking immense, and that game, the, the abilities, the neon ability was my favorite, it's so cool, man, the different types of abilities, the TV, the concrete, which you don't really get to use until the end, um, and what was the other one? The first one you get smoke, which is uh, just they're all so cool and it's cool to switch between them and just you can go around and evaporate different places and and the storyline people hated on it and people hated on Delson Row, but I like the storyline. 
Uh, there, I know it wasn't... Uh, I thought it was pretty emotional uh, from time to time. There is bits in the game where the storyline kind of falls away and there's not there's not much of the story um, as we just kind of roam from place to place in the city. But uh, I really enjoyed that game. I really liked Delson as well. I really liked his humorous, um, funny, kind of cocky, arrogant character. I liked him. Um, but yeah, that game was just in, just incredibly graphically incredible graphically sorry and gameplay wise i really liked it as well um next up in fourth is a game that people hated on ridiculous amounts and that is assassin's creed unity and i am gonna get some hate for having this fourth but um I never encountered any of these glitches, so get the fuck off my back. I never encountered any gl- game glitches that made me think, wow, I don't want to play this game anymore. And I only had maybe one glitch where I was stuck in a wall, and I was like, oh, that's funny. It's not like I was like, oh, I want to stop playing this game now, it's shit. Uh, I mean, some people may have had problems where it's it's broken down so much that they can't play it, and that's fair enough. That's fair enough, you you can hate on the game all you want then, but I didn't have those problems, and I'm getting free DLC for nothing. <laughs> but, um, I don't know when that free DLC releases, actually. Is it is it next, early next year, hopefully? Um, but yeah, I, I, I completed the storyline on YouTube. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. That story, to me, was really emotional and really awesome, but I, I did not like the ending at all. Um, really didn't like the ending. Where your your GF don't want to give any spoilers, but um, anyway, yeah, I was kind of sad uh, after that ending. It kind of left a sour taste in my mouth because I really liked the storyline, the the relationship between Elise and Arno. I really enjoyed it, and I thought now that maybe we'd get another game with Arno because Arno to, Arno to me was a really cool character. I liked him a lot and they keep switching characters in Assassin's Creed. I kind of wish they'd stick with one for a little while so you'd, you'd be emotionally attached to him. Uh, but it doesn't seem like there's going to be another game with Arno in it. Um, but hopefully we get a cool new guy. Um, I, I wait for Unity to Black Flag. I did not enjoy Black Flag but most people love Black Flag and hated Unity so I don't know. Um... But uh, I did make a comment on Ghost Robo's video saying, honestly, I don't get all the hate. Uh, I fucking love Unity, and I have about 300 thumbs up on him. So some people agree with me, obviously. Um, and yeah, I know I'm going to get hate for that, but it got a 77 on Met- uh, Metacritic, which is not good no, for an Assassin's Creed game. It's not terrible or anything, but it's not very good. And in third position here, uh, we're into the top three now, which is getting down to the wire. I'm just going to take a drink first because I'm fucking gasping. It's my first time doing um, a top 20 or anything, so excuse me if um, I'm doing this wrong or whatever, but top three, we're starting off here with Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, which was just, it kind of hated because it's a Call of Duty game, you know? Oh, another Call of Duty, fuck this. But I mean, the storyline with Kevin Spacey, Jonathan Iron playing Jonathan Irons, um, the cutscenes just looking like the best thing I've ever seen in my life. And the storyline was short, but it was short and sweet, and it was nicely done. I really enjoyed it. The The thing with YouTube, YouTube really pissed me off where I couldn't upload videos at all because they'd get blocked worldwide, and it was kind of a bitchy thing for Sledgehammer to do. I mean, I don't get why they would or whatever. But anyway, Activision, whatever. Uh, but... Yeah, got an 85% on Metacritic, which is pretty good. Um, the online play is a lot of fun as well. It's 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 similar to Titanfall in ways, but um, I think it's better better done, maybe. Uh, I don't know. And it has a campaign. It has single player. Um, it has local play. It has a lot of things that Titanfall doesn't. And Titanfall just has the online play, you know? And Call of Duty has a lot of different game modes as well. Titanfall doesn't really. Um, until the DLC packs anyway. And Uplink. These kind of game modes in Call of Duty are just really fun. And uh, I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed that game a lot. And the storyline to me was really good. Um, it was a cool ending. I kind of wish 
Uh, that guy didn't die. Uh, but I'm not going to try give spoilers here. I don't want to. Just in case you haven't played the game. But um, anyway. It was cool. Gideon was cool. Um, Mitchell, your own character, was pretty cool. I can't remember the the guy's name. The black guy. Um, what's his name again? Shit, I can't think of it. He was like your leader at the start. And... God, that's killing me now, because I definitely know it. Oh, it's in the back of my mind. Um, but he, he comes back later on in the game, which is cool, and you join up with him. Uh, Atlas was a really cool thing. I really liked that storyline where Atlas was Atlas was kind of taking over the world, and Kevin Spacey, as Jonathan Irons, was like a big villain in disguise. It was really awesome and nicely done. At number two here, we have Dragon Age Inquisition, which is one of the most incredible RPGs I've played so far, and the depth and scope of this game is absolutely magnificent, and it's an absolutely huge world. It's it's going to take me some time to complete it. Uh, I haven't completed it, if you're wondering. Um, it's going to take me maybe 120 plus hours. I'm doing a walkthrough on YouTube. I recently started it back up. Uh, I kind of went off and just played by myself for 10 hours straight. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's it's the party, the gameplay is cool. Um, <laughs> the way you kind of switch between mages and warriors and rogues uh, in gameplay is really cool. And the kind of way they have a system where you can... Um, what is what's the word where you can like go into a tactical mode? Uh, is really fucking awesome as well. Uh, my dog, shut up, go away. God damn it, husky. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it, and the graphics in this game are really, really fucking good as well. But yeah, it's just magnificent. I saw the first dragon in the cutscene for the first time. I freaked out. It looks so incredible. And Corypheus, who is the villain. What the hell's up with this, man? There's some weird light in the middle of my screen. It's kind of fucking up, it's fucking up with me. Um, there it seems to be gone now. Um, Corypheus looks incredible. He is the villain. Um, what else is there? This fucking Skyhold, which is your base, and you're basically like the king of that place. It's so fucking cool, guys. Really, Dragon Age. It just. Oh, man, it's it's incredible. That's what it is. It's this fucking thing. It's it, it, the light is shining off that. Sorry. Um, but yeah, it's just a massive open world. Best RPG I've played in a long time. And I, I really, really enjoyed it so much. It got an 89% on Metacritic, so it did get great reviews. And I saw you can just see dragons openly in the world which i've seen a couple of times i got murdered by one once i was just i was just kind of casually attacking a fade rift and i just hear sarah goes oh she's a big one uh, who's a uh, uh part of my party at the time and then i'm like what and then i just see all the guys that i'm attacking instantly get murdered and i'm, I'm like that was easy <laughs> and then i turn around sarah just gets murdered in one hit and then I, all both my other party me members just die, and I'm just like, what the fuck? And I look up, and there's this massive dragon, and I just kind of run for my life, and, and, and just manage to escape, I think. Um, but yeah, it's really cool the way you, in the open world, there's kind of just guys all around the place, um, enemies all around the place, camps all around the place, fade rifts all around the place, it's cool, and you... And you are, like, your decisions really do affect the world as well. Similar to, like, the Telltale games. Your decisions really affect the world. And you can choose whether you want people to join you or not. You can choose whether you want them to be enemies or whether you want them to be allies. Um, and it's, it's cool the way they do that. So, I kind of mostly get everyone on my side. And I know that might might not pan out for me in the end. Because they could there could be internal wars then be, between different guys and stuff like that. But, uh... You're placed in Skyhold, you judge prisoners and everything. It's just so, so cool. And wow, this video has dragged on, hasn't it? Oh, shit, I didn't realize it was that long. <laughs> uh, in first position, guys, is The Last of Us Remastered. And yes, it is a remastered game in first, but it was my first time playing it. I didn't play it on PS3, so that's why you can understand it's first for me. 96% uh, on Metacritic. Uh, it's fucking incredible. I can see why it got all this praise and everything because it was one of the most incredible games I've ever played and it was so fucking cool guys it was really really awesome and yeah it really it really was uh, I enjoyed it so much ridiculous amounts the storyline just 
emotional as fuck. The gameplay, the shooting mechanics were awesome. The online is awesome too. It's so underrated. Um, but <laughs> Joel, love Joel, love Ellie. Uh, Tommy is my favorite. Fucking Tommy the boss. Um, but yeah. Anyway, guys, I, I better wrap this up. Last of Us Remastered, my game of the year. Dragon Age, if there was no remasters. Um, so... Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. I'm probably going to get hate and get a load of thumbs down as well, but uh, I don't really care about that. But yeah, that's my personal opinion of my top 20 games of the year. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to hit it with a big like, like I said, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye. <laughs>